Hi everyone. Good morning and thank you for taking the time today. I am Alankar Agnihotri. I am a product manager with the Google AdMob team and I'm very happy to share with you some of the work the team has been doing to help support our game developers and publishers. But before I start, let's take a look at some of the industry-wide context. So as we all know, during the pandemic, throughout the pandemic, we have seen aggressive growth uh, generally in, in uh, apps industry. Uh, since the pandemic, with the start of 2022, things are normalizing more towards the pre-pandemic level. Um, and a big part of it to, is to the macroeconomic situation as well as the privacy regulations that we are seeing across the industry. Um, I don't know if you have been reading the news or if you bought a cup of coffee as I did this morning, it, it actually pinches, right? And we see that in, in consumer uh, spend decline and so on. Despite that, uh, according to uh, data.ai, we still see that there were 90 billion downloads last year uh, during 2022. Uh, and similarly, <clears throat> from our uh, you know, last year we had this mobile game report that we published, and we found that 60% of the players play more than two games. So now, more than ever, is the time when publishers and game developers have to balance two things. One is how to optimize revenue, how to build a sustainable uh, revenue-based business, while also making sure that the users are retained in the apps ecosystem. And that's what we have been focusing on at AdMob, trying to help you achieve your goals. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. But before we go into the details, let's take a moment to appreciate what the team has done uh, with a case study from Gung Ho, who adopted AdMob for, for, uh, for their ad strategy. Uh, they saw 300% lift in their ad revenue while also keeping their users happy. There was only positive impact on user retention. And that's, very, uh, that, that's important, right? Like whether you are a developer who have a strategy to support hybrid, that is both in-app purchase as well as in-app ads, or otherwise you want to solely optimize, uh, solely uh, want to earn revenue through in-app ads, AdMob supports both of them. So I'm going to talk about the three main investment pillars for AdMob platform, which is based on publishers' feedback as to what is most important for them. First and foremost, earning money. How do we build tools so that you can maximize revenue from your apps? The second part is the other side of the equation. It's not only meaningful to build something for the short term. You want to keep your users engaged, so they continue to uh, play your games more, they continue to be part of your apps ecosystem. So we do so by offering you more engaging and rich ad formats. And then the third part is building a sustainable business. How do we help you acquire more users? How do we uh, help you increase your user base? So those are the three pillars uh, that we are going to talk about. We also have our team at the front, so if you have any questions after this presentation, especially if you have hard questions after this presentation, please reach out to them because you know, I won't handle them. Uh, so starting with, the, uh, with maximizing the revenue, right? <clears throat> the most important thing here is to make sure that for every ad impression opportunity, you could maximize competition. And to that end, we want to support as many buyers as possible to increase the competition. When you select AdMob Network, you automatically get access to 200 plus buyers that compete for your inventory or for your ad impression opportunity. On top of that, so, so these are uh, buyers that are automatically activated, you don't have to do anything for it. But beyond that, for any networks that support their own SDK, we have been adding more and more buyers uh, to support, we have been adding more and more support for such buyers. So last year, uh, we added uh, Pengal and Liftoff Monetize 
uh, formerly known as Mangal. These buyers are available to all the Edmob publishers. We are also working with Mintegral uh, in, in Mobi, uh, and these buyers will be available to the Edmob publishers very soon. So <clears throat> that is about the buyer onboarding. It's not sufficient for us to just have a growing list of buyers. That's not enough. What we want is that any time a buyer shows up with AdMob, that is optimized to give the best return to the publishers. So there is a high bar that we want to achieve with any buyer that, that, you know, that AdMob supports. So as part of that, for example, we worked with Liftoff Monetize, formerly known as Vangal, and we identified, like both the teams worked together as we integrated their SDK into, you know, to, to work with our platform, and we identified opportunities where the ad load rate increased by 10x, you know, so more dollars, more revenue for our publishers. So be, besides that, like once you have the buyers available, the second part is how do we support the increasingly complex needs of the publishers? As business grows, as there are more apps, as there are a variety of nuanced ways the publishers want to target different slices of their traffic. So they may want to use different types of networks in US versus in APAC. They might want to support both bidding and waterfall in their setups. They might want to have different pricing selection, like they might want to charge higher for certain slices of traffic than others. As these setup becomes more complex, you need a platform that is scalable and that is fast to support that. So last year, we made a lot of, uh, lot of improvements in our UI such that it's snappy. So we have 15 times improvement in UI load, load uh, latency. And we also support three times more entities for these complex setups. And by entities, I mean number of ad units supported, or number of mediation groups supported, or number of waterfall line items within each mediation group that we support. So a lot more for making it more efficient for the publishers to set up to support these complex, uh, complex setups. One thing that we heard from developers and publishers, especially from game developers, is that it's very painful in AdMob to set up a variety of buyers and uh, you know, set up ad unit mappings. So the team went back to the drawing board and redesigned the whole experience of supporting multiple buyers and uh, reusing, you know, and, and the ability to create and manage ad unit mappings. So for the buyers, now there is a central place where you can create new relationships with the buyers, you can manage those relationships, and there are certain controls through which you can, you, you can control their demand. So it's all at one place, and from here, it seamlessly appear across all the mediation groups as well as the different parts of the reporting. The other equally or even more critical part of the workflow is ad unit mapping. So this is, this is where, be it waterfall or bidding, if a buyer has their own SDK, this is where you create uh, you know, uh, a kind of a link between AdMob ad unit and a third party uh, network ad placement. So previously you could not reuse, you know, these mappings. So for some of our publishers who were using, on an average, uh, some of our top publishers use a single mapping 17 times. And previously they had to, you know, enter it 17 times. So, so now all of that is gone. You have a centralized place where you could create and manage. You can bulk create mappings. You can manage these mappings. And then across mediation groups, you can you reuse these mappings. So it substantially decreases the effort that's required to manage your complex workflows. So this is going to be rolled out soon to all the publishers. Uh, but during our closed beta, one of our uh, top partners, Bitmango, they found that they were able to save 50% time uh, in managing their operations. So a substantial improvement in their overall workflow management. Um, and it's great to see when publishers, you know, top partners appreciate the work that, that we have been doing in this regard. So what if there are even more complex use cases? 
you know, this is boss fight we are talking about. So there are publishers who are actually trying to automate their whole workflow, uh, right? They, they want to build very sophisticated business intelligence team, uh, business intelligence uh, systems. And for that, we, uh, AdMob supports a comprehensive suite of APIs. We have reporting APIs, uh, which have been generally available to all the AdMob publishers for a while now. Uh, but there are certain features uh, which we have launched recently. Uh, so for example, the mediation A-B test data is now available in the reporting API. It also supports the campaign and user acquisition data. Uh, we are also going to launch the ads activity report, uh, which brings together data from bidding, waterfall, as well as AdMob network. Uh, which previously used to be three separate reports. Uh, so, so this report kind of brings it together at one place. We also have a platform management API. It allows publishers to automate their mediation setup uh, through API. So they don't have to use Edmob for, for doing all the mediation setup. Um, it, you can actually create apps and by creating apps, I mean setting up apps that you have created. It's not like generative AI, which will write apps for you, but whatever app you have written, you can set it up in uh, AdMob. It also creates ad units. It creates uh, mediation group, waterfall line items, and then you can update uh, those waterfall line items uh, through, through the use of API. So a lot of automation, a lot of uh, smart uh, you know, workflows can be implemented. One of our top partners who has been using uh, AdMob API, they reported 40% increase in their workflow efficiency through APIs versus working through the, the, uh, through the UI. So that's all about setting up your systems, your, your mediation. But once the mediation is set up, the other request from publishers is having insightful reporting the ability to make smart or uh, you know, informed business decisions to optimize your monetization. And for that, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of reporting, reporting improvements. We recently launched Ads Activity Report, and now it's even more powerful. So now it, uh, you know, it offers like, you, there are usability improvements. You can have 10 different dimensions uh, plotted uh, at the same time. You can compare different duration of time uh, for the performance. There are more dimensions. So for example, there is app version. Uh, you could look at the you know, hourly delivery, like more granularity, so hourly performance data. Uh, there is also the ad source full list. And what it does is, uh, when I mentioned that with AdMob Network, you get 200 plus buyers you could actually see who those 200 buyers are and how they are performing for how they are performing for your uh, for your app there is also att consent which helps you identify the impact of apple's att framework on your app monetization so super impactful super useful once you have set up the workflow and you know, you, you know how the reporting works and so on, it becomes important that the implementation is right. When we look at our data, uh, you know, when we look at aggregate funnel data, one thing is that we notice that a lot of publishers leave meaningful amount of money on the table because they have not initialized the adopters properly or they have not implemented the SDK properly. So it, a lot of ad requests just gets dropped because things have not set up properly. So to ease that up, we have Ad Inspector. It's a front-end driven tool, makes it very easy for you to test your setup. And there are a few very important updates here. The first of which is all these new bidding buyers with their own SDK are now available within Ads Inspector. It shows you a detailed report of uh, detailed status report of all those third-party SDK buyers. In fact, all the third-party SDK buyers, whether they are part of bidding or waterfall. The other important thing is when you have to debug, uh, you know, uh, there, there are times when, when you want to debug uh, the, the setup, 
uh, later on or you know not at, at the same moment or you want to share it you want to share the logs with other people you could do so by emailing the add request logs now and there is no charles log setup required for it uh, and then the last but not the least is publishers mentioned that there are certain add slots in the game where they are hard to reach uh, right so to ease the, uh, to, to simplify that you can now trigger such ads uh, out of context, right? So a lot of impactful changes here. So that was maximizing revenue. Having more competition, making it efficient and easy and fast for you to manage your workflows, as well as giving you reports and testing abilities uh, to, to do it in a more uh, informed, uh, informed manner. The second side of the coin is making sure that users are retained within your apps and your uh, apps ecosystem. Uh, they, the, the having rich formats that are organic and natural to players' flow of the game. So as part of that, the first one that I'm going to talk about is app open ads. So this format, this, these ads show up at the start of the ad, uh, at the start of the app when the app is loading, we realize that there is an inherent context switching here. And we tested a lot of different options to make sure that the user is clear about what, the user is clear that their desired action is happening while an ad is showing. So you could see that the, at the top of the screen, this is where it's very clear that the app is loading or whatever their desired uh, action is, either, either the uh, opening of an app or switching to an app, and then a clearly marked ad underneath that, uh, underneath that uh, context at the top. There are several advantages of this format. Like it allows you to monetize as soon as the app is open. Uh, it maximizes uh, the demand. Uh, there is, uh, it's a very flexible format according to the devices that the users use. Uh, and you know, as I mentioned, a lot of testing has gone behind it to make sure that um, users are not confused and it remains compliant to the uh, app store policies. So there are a couple of app open ads here, as you could see. The second part is rewarded ads. It's been around for a while. The best, the best thing about rewarded ads is that user has the control. They can decide to trigger this. And because of this control, and because of the value it brings, user, you have user's attention. They are watching this whole ad end to end. They are paying attention, and this reflects in higher conversion rates, higher eCPM and ARPDAO from this format. Not only is it good for developers' monetization, it's also great for a user's experience. Because one, like obviously they, they are choosing to, to start this, to trigger this. And more than that, now they are able to play your games for longer period. So they are consuming consuming premium content without having to purchase it. And because they are playing that game longer, they are, they are using your apps longer, there is an increased likelihood that they might be making more in-app purchases, right? So a lot of, it, it's kind of a win-win. Uh, this format is a win-win for both publishers and users. And that's why we also see around 60% to 70% opt-in rate for this format. Some of the things that you could do to make sure to, to take the, to make the best of this format is to clearly articulate the value of the reward, to make sure the rewarded ad is discoverable, they know what they have to do to get the reward, and then the third one is make it sticky, make the post purchase experience uh, good enough so, so they are interested in using this again. There are still going to be users which won't engage with rewarded ads or in-app purchases. For such users, we have rewarded interstitial. 
So it starts, it's an autoplay skippable format. So you would see it on the right. Uh, so, you know, the video starts and if they spend time to watch the video, they start time to watch the ad, they still claim the value of the reward. Uh, it's very easy to set up. Um, you know, you, you, it, it start, you know, it's just one additional parameter that could be used here. So one of the case studies from Heavy, uh, they use the in-app ads with some of, uh, with AdMob network, and they switch to AdMob platform, and they saw a 10% increase in revenue, as well as a lot of savings in the, in setting up their mediation through the use of uh, in-app bidding. Last but not the least is collapsible banner. Uh, it starts out, it's kind of, as the name suggests, it's kind of a collapsible banner. So it starts out uh, taking up half of the screen, showing the ad, and if the user wants, they can just uh, collapse it. So instead of, you know, unlike interstitial, which goes away, this basically collapses into a banner. So there is a certain persuasiveness because, you know, it's sticky. You still see it uh, in the banner at the bottom. So there is more, uh, there is a stronger performance uh, as opposed to the regular banner ads. This is in closed beta and one of the beta publishers saw increase in double digits for their eCPM. So, uh, you know, very impactful format. So the way you implement it, or at least some recommendations are that this could be implemented when the level changes or when you are showing the user stats or scores, uh, at that time, th this could show up. Now, coming to the third part of, uh, or the third pillar, that is how do we help our publishers build a sustainable business? How do we help them acquire more and more users? So for this, one of the, you know, one of the launches that we have done is having impression level ad revenue to calculate the lifetime value of the users. Uh, how it works is basically AdMob pings back the value of each impression, the, reven the ad revenue value of each impression uh, as it shows, you know, after it has shown on, the, after the ad has shown on the user's device. There are two use cases for publishers here. One is for the existing mediation setup. The changes they make uh, in their setup, how does that impact their, how does that impact the user's lifetime value? So, you know, that's for the existing mediation setup. The other critical piece is by having an accurate and precise uh, impression level ad revenue and lifetime value, it helps you define a more robust strategy for user acquisition. So again, uh, you know, publishers have found this uh, very helpful. This data can then be used uh, to build or to be uh, to be uh, to be ingested in in-house business intelligence systems, or otherwise, we also have integration with uh, some third-party analytics tool. Uh, it's just Singular Apps Flyer Tingin. Um, I think I covered that. So some of the values that that are shared with with the publishers are the precision value, the currency, which is USD, and the value of the impression. Now, this one is as impactful as is, it is difficult to say. Target return on ad spend for ad revenue, or TROS for ad revenue. Uh, what it does is it allows you to target those users. So as an advertiser, it allows you to target those users who have more likelihood of engaging with in-app ads. So this is kind of an update to the uh, TROS or targeted return on ad spend which tries to target, uh, which tries to optimize for those users who have, uh, you know, more in-app purchase events, right? So what you do in that case is basically you share with uh, Google Ads uh, how much uh, the user has 
participated in the in-app uh, monetization activities, you share a dynamic revenue value of that, and that is used to optimize uh, which users are targeted. So TROS for ad revenue is kind of similar in the sense that you share data not only from, you share uh, revenue data not only from AdMob, but also from other third-party networks uh, through Google Analytics for Firebase, uh, SDK conversion reporting, and then that is used to optimize, uh, of, that is used to target those users who are more likely to engage in in-app in ads. This is also available, like in, in third-party ad revenue in Google Analytics is also available for other third-party monetization platform, not only for AdMob platform. So that's there. So you could imagine where it's going where, you know, once you have uh, that, we are also going to very soon launch TROS for hybrid monetization. So if you are supporting both in-app purchase as well as in-app ads um, revenue, then this will help you target those users, uh, you know, which optimizes a combi combination of both. So this, is, uh, this will be in beta in the next few months. So that kind of concludes the three different pillars of our strategy, uh, maximizing revenue, engaging formats, and then uh, you know, helping you grow your business by acquiring more users through more insightful reporting and optimization in that area. Uh, we have our team at front. If you have more questions, I think I'm way ahead of schedule here. So if you have more questions, we are happy to answer any of those. If you want to learn more, uh, you could also visit our website uh, that's listed here. Um, and that's the wrap for my presentation. Thank you again for taking the time.